In this video, I'm going to introduce you to F-Class John. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here with F-Class John. Thank you, John, for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. John came up for a very special purpose. <laughs> I was interviewing Eric Cortina. The subject was all about F-Class shooting and rifles. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have John as kind of a surprise guest? And the reaction was legendary. Do you remember that F-Class, John? That was a pretty <laughs> rough day. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Got him! It was. I, 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 I've known Eric for a little while. I don't think I've seen a surprise like that on his face in, <laughs> as long as I've known him. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. That was pretty good. Good stuff. Yeah. But there's, there's more to the trip for sure. You know, since I've gotten to know more competitive shooters and more YouTubers, you know, people like Eric Cortina will direct me towards, hey, here's another cool person in the industry. You got to meet this person. You got to shoot with this person. This was a great opportunity for us to get together. Now, you're going to want to check out F-Class John on YouTube. He does videos. He does reloading room confessions. Yeah. He does a lot about F-Class and, and beyond, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do reloading, some gear reviews, you know, kind of everything that's encapsulated in my world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And we're going to hopefully get together and do some shooting. I have not shot F class. I want to build a rig, yeah. a rifle. Yeah. I want to I want to go to a match and, and make a fool of myself or or try <laughs> try and learn this craft however you want to look at that. Yeah, I promise you won't make a fool of yourself, but yeah, you got to <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. Okay. That's super good. Okay. So what I wanted to do for my audience is let them get to know you a little bit. Okay. So tell me a little bit about how you got into shooting. And let's talk about the pathway that led towards this whole F class thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know if I had a conventional timeline with my shooting. So I, as a child, I think like everybody, I always wanted a BB gun. <laughs> uh, grew up with a, a a family who was into shooting, but I was never allowed to have a BB gun. And and did uh, your mom tell you you'll shoot <laughs> your eye out or, or what? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I just never got one, right? Okay. And I never got a rifle or anything like that, but I was always allowed to shoot if we went out somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so I did have an appreciation for shooting. I had grandparents who had acreage back in another state and we would go back there and I'd get to shoot. And I think like anybody who gets hooked at an early age, you just love shooting. And so um, I did more and more shooting. I started reloading handgun ammunition in high school. Um, used to work at one of the larger gun stores in the country and got had an opportunity to shoot a lot of different weapons uh, late in high school, early in college. And uh, just really thought like, I loved it. Like it was probably some of my favorite times in my life working, some of the best people I ever met. And, and I really never saw myself doing anything else. And then Y2K came and things changed in my life. And I have what I call my dark period. I, I didn't pick up a handgun. I, I sold every handgun, rifle I owned. I had a really pretty decent collection. Mm -hmm. Sold everything. Uh oh. Moved. Yeah, no, I did. I mean, I used to collect lever guns and then, uh, like, I was a big, you know, lever and, and uh, single action army type collector. Okay. And yeah. I had a lot of really nice firearms and, and I sold them all so that my wife and I could make a life change. And I never picked up anything for, like, gosh, it must have been 10 or 12 years. Mm hmm. And never really thought about shooting and it just all these other things in my life had kind of done that. And, and we ended up moving down to Oregon and I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I was like, I want to go shooting again. And <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm like every other person out there. I was like, and if I'm going to go shoot, I want to shoot a sniper rifle. <laughs> and, then, and, you know, I think you and I both know there's a pretty wide range of anything someone would consider a sniper rifle. And for me, that was going to my local uh, gun store, and they had this Remington Custom Action 308, and it was super sexy looking. And and from when I worked in the gun store, that was sort of the epitome of like a sniper rifle. We didn't do any kind of bench rest. This is back in the 90s, and there wasn't really bench rest in F-Class and all this stuff. So I looked at that gun, and I was like, oh, I got to have that. <laughs> so I saved up, and I bought this thing. They had it like super marked down. I figured out why later, but they had it. <laughs> <laughs> they had it super marked down and I thought, well, if it came from the custom shop, I must be buying the best gun in here. <laughs> and so I, I bought some, you know, federal gold medal for it and I went mm -hmm. out and shot. And 168s? Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. And because I, you know, again, having worked in a gun store with a very narrow focus, you think that's all there is in the world, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so I shot this thing and I remember going to the 600 Yard Club and 
there were guys out there with what I now know are F-class guns and stuff, and, and I was like, <laughs> you know, and I, I had my gun, and I had done my own homemade, like, three-level leaf camo on it, you know, and <laughs> I mean, it was this horrible. I can picture this thing. I could picture it. It was Did horrible. Did you throw right? it on the kitchen floor and take a photo and put it on the internet or the couch? I did. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I did. I I at least took a picture and shared it. How about that? Okay. Um, you know, and, and and I thought that was like the bee's knees. <laughs> and um, so then I thought, well, if I can shoot this, and I was I was doing okay. I wasn't shooting great, but I was like, brand new PRS thing started coming out. People are like, oh, you got to try this PRS. And I was like, okay. I'm like, I bet I got the best gun out there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so I, I buy, at the time, there was only one company that was making DBMs for 700s. I can't remember what it was, but Wyatt, I think. Okay. And um, and I remember, like, it was hard to find, and I ordered it and put it on, and I was like, I'm going to just show those guys how it's done, oh, <laughs> right? Oh, oh. I know where this is going. <laughs> I've shot a couple PRS matches. <laughs> and this wasn't even, like, a hardcore PRS match. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure my gun would have been in two pieces if I'd gone to a regular gun. <laughs> So I go to the match and like, I don't know, I did okay on a couple stages, but clearly very bottom rung. And then I got to this one stage where it was like sitting, kneeling, standing. Mm -hmm. and, and like most people who start in some kind of a time match, I was going for time over precision. Mm -hmm. And as a result, this box mag wasn't really crafted great or something. And, and I just ripped the whole inside of my, my palm open, putting the mag up just. <sighs> <laughs> and I'm like, it doesn't matter. And I'm still finishing the stage with blood dripping off. And the guys are just staring at me like, who is this idiot? And I'm like, I don't think PRS is for me. <laughs> so I go back to shooting 600. And, and uh, I had, uh, somebody there said, well, you know, you got to get rid of that gun. You got to buy a Ruger Precision. So I bought a Ruger Precision the next day and sold the, the, the other one. And, and that sort of started my progression into actual F class because mm -hmm. it was in 308s, And then I went to, to, to a couple of 6.5s. And... And then I decided I really wanted to get into, it was about a year later, I decided I really wanted to get into competitive shooting. And um, so I called my gunsmith, or no, it wasn't even that. I, I was shooting the RPR at a pretty big state match. Mm -hmm. And it's wobbling all over the place. I can't hit nothing. And this guy that shoots with us that was at the match, he's such a kind guy, this guy Bill. <laughs> he, uh, he goes, John, John, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. You know, he's one of these guys. And he goes, yep. he, he opens up the back of his truck, right? And he goes, and he's going through, and he's got just rifle case after rifle case, right? And he's like, no, no, no. Okay, here. And he, hand, he goes, take this gun. And he goes, what's the number on the gun? I'm like, I don't know, 265A. And he goes, uh, okay, here's the box of ammo for it. I'm <laughs> just like, oh. wow. Yeah, oh yeah, this guy's meticulous. <laughs> he goes, go shoot that. Just enjoy the rest of your day. So I had been shooting maybe 170s, 180s out of 200 at, at um, 1,000 yards, and I lay down with this gun. It's the only thing that changed, just the gun and the ammo. I lay down, shot a 198. Oh, nice. I literally went, that's it. Sold all the RPRs the next day, <laughs> called up the guy. You that, don't waste any time, do I you? don't. I'm, I'm, I'm a little impulsive. <laughs> so I, uh, I call up the guy that our local people had used for a gunsmith, and I said, tell me everything I need to buy. I'm building an F-Class gun, and that was it. I, I'm still using that same defiance deviant that I ordered the mm -hmm. day after I shot that gun. So, wow. Yeah. And so we talked about this with Eric a little bit. F-Class yeah. is kind of like a bench rest on your belly. Is that, <laughs> is that what the term is? So they call it belly bench rest. Belly sometimes. bench rest. Yeah, okay. belly bench rest. Yep. Yeah. So everything is shot prone. Mm -hmm. uh, usually some kind of a mat. F-Open is going to be a front rest with a rear bag. TR mm -hmm. is going to be uh, some kind of a bipod with a rear bag. Mm -hmm. We have slightly different weight uh, requirements. And then TR has to be 308 or 223. Uh, in open, we can literally use anything that's up to 33 caliber. Okay. So uh, we have, I know we were joking about it earlier, but we have seen guys go out there with 338 Lapuas <laughs> and just get punished. Because we have to shoot 20 shots for record plus ciders. Yeah. So imagine, it'll, you know. It'll beat you up a little bit. It, it and you can't fun. have brakes. And your no brakes are allowed. No, no brakes, wow. no electronics. You know, people always say, oh, you got to film one of your matches. I can't do that because no electronics are allowed uh, compared mm -hmm. to like PRS where it's very technology driven. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying to picture shooting my 338 LaPo without a breaker or a suppressor on it. I don't, I don't know if I want to do that or not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. And you have to make weight. Wow. Right? So that guy was shooting a 338 that weighed less okay. than 22 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So fast forward yep. to let's talk about when you started shooting with Eric. Yeah. Because he's kind of the common thread between you and I. Absolutely. Uh, up to this point. Yep. Yeah. So uh, 
Eric Cortina is sort of a legend in our circle. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I had some funny interactions with him where he never knew who I was. So for a while I was making videos with, without my face in it. Nobody knew who F class John was because a lot of people I hung around with just called me by my last name. And, mm -hmm. and so I kind of knew he, who he, who he was and, you know, I never wanted to bother him or get in his way. And, you know, I have an appreciation for what mm -hmm. he did and stuff like that. And then it just sort of wound up one day and he goes, you're F class John. I go, yeah, I'm F class John. He goes, Oh, Hey, <laughs> you know, and, and the friendship was born. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think Eric in, in some circles gets a bad rap. He's an incredibly giving, gracious person. He's, mm -hmm. he's very focused, very intense with what he does. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's, he's such a great guy in the shooting world because, you know, he really sort of in the F class world started what nobody had done, which is sort of opened it up to the world mm -hmm. and shown people, you know, like this is a discipline and this is something we do. And I kind of tried to follow that and, and, you know, really show people that this is a real discipline and it takes, you know, you know, it takes experience and it takes the right gear and, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's a lot of fun and the camaraderie is amazing. Like I don't shoot PRS, but I'm assuming it's the same way. Like I go out to a big match and you know, half the guys on the line, sure. and, you know, how's your daughter? How's your kid? How'd that surgery go? Yep. I mean, it's a, it's a giant family. And you know. for, for your community, hey, F class, John, I watched your video. <laughs> I get that once and, in a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good feeling. I, I get the, my wife hates you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah, right? yeah. It's cost the family a few thousand bucks, but. <laughs> I wasn't going to buy an amp. I wasn't going to buy a, you know, but you, you convinced me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's funny. So, yeah, no, yeah. but I, uh, Eric's been great. Um, you know, I really tried to, uh, you know, listen to what he says. He's, he's been doing a lot longer than I have. And, and I really try to listen to what everybody says out there. There's a yep. lot of people that have been doing a lot longer than me. And, yep. you know, I think that's really where you gain your knowledge. That's my exact philosophy with gunsmithing. You know, I want to build the best rifles. I want to help people build rifles. And I want to listen to the most knowledgeable, best voices in the world when it comes to building the most accurate rifles. And then to take all of that knowledge and see how good of a job I can do. Right. And make right? it your own, right? Like in yeah. shooting, it's the same way. Like, I think when I started out, I wanted to shoot. There was like three or four people that I really kind of emulated, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought if I could shoot just like them, then I could win like them. And, and it took me a long time to realize that I'm never going to shoot like them. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is take a piece from that person and a piece from that person and a piece from that person and, and add it to who I am. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really, I think, what's helped me grow the most in the last year and a half or so. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great to make to, to come up with your own way of doing it and to just, you know, use the input and the information from others, but but then maybe take it to the next level in certain areas as well. I'm right? Certainly trying. Yeah, <laughs> certainly trying. So tell me about a couple things. So first, tell me about what your plan is in 2023 with F-Class shooting or kind of other shooting? Yeah, so we have uh, the second biggest match of the year coming up in two weeks, and that's the Southwest mm -hmm. Nationals in Phoenix. Uh, last year was, to be honest, the first time I did really well. I finished fourth place last year. Nice. My goal is to improve on that this year. I really want to win it. Mm -hmm. uh, we then have a huge match. It's called the V-Squared Finale. It's an invite-only match that we do out in June in Tennessee at the Dead Zero Range. Hmm. Uh, only the top 32 shooters in, in Open and the top 32 shooters in uh, TR are invited. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'll be invited to that this year because I've accumulated enough points. Uh, and so that's a huge match. And then in October, we have the F-Class Nationals. So okay. those are kind of the three matches that we call an A-level match. Mm -hmm. um, spare no expense. Mm -hmm. Every detail's done, the best of the best of every gear, ammo, everything at those matches. So s speaking of that, yeah. what cartridge are you shooting this year? So I am shooting, like many now, a modified 6.5 necked up to 7 millimeter. Um, so the so-called Wheeler? I'm shooting a yeah. different form, but yeah, okay. something similar to That's that. Right. Uh, it's been great for me. I've had some bad run-ins with other Magnums in the past, and I... Mm -hmm. I swore, in fact, my viewers know that I swore off ever switching off 284 about a year and a half ago. <laughs> and I, I told them, like, I'm never, ever, well, never, yeah. ever. Right, uh, right. <laughs> so I, I put it through its paces last year. I started shooting it in June, uh, went to nationals with it, finished 15th or 16th, something like that. Uh, was really happy with its performance. So it, it has become my, my primary cartridge now. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely. second question yeah. is, Tell me about why you do YouTube and, <laughs> and what makes you motivated to share this with people, right? We all have different reasons, right? Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, I, 
I just want to make videos that I would want to watch. Like mm -hmm. that's my motivation. I know a lot of people like I kind of don't do high level, you know, high production value videos, and I know that. And and you know, like that's not to say I can't improve on that, but in terms of the content and just kind of doing them in one take and kind of walking through a product, it's just kind of the way that when I watch a video, I kind of want to just go, okay, just give me like, just give me the rundown on this and, mm -hmm. and tell me what it's about. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I kind of try to incorporate. And, you know, I say generally it's pretty good feedback. I, uh, I think I've been fairly lucky not to be super trolled or, you know, <laughs> right. I mean, I think that's all we all hope for. Right. But, uh, but you've got a, you've got a serious audience, right? I do. And yeah. when you have a serious, like, like it's, when it's, I want to know info, if I go to Accurate Shooter Forum, I know I'm going to get better info than like AR15.com. Yeah. Sorry, everybody out there <laughs> that loves AR15.com. It's just, you know, when you go to the serious people, you're going to get serious answers. Yeah. You're going to you're going to sift through a lot of the BS, as it were. Yeah. Right. And I, I think your channel and your audience is like that. People that like myself initially, hey, there's not a lot of info out here about progressive reloading presses. I just need to put this out there so that it's available for other people. Yeah. No, you know? I I totally agree, and I. You know, I try to cover the products that I think make a, a difference in the world for mm -hmm. my kind of reloading and for other reloading. Uh, I try to be as impartial as I can. I think yeah. you and I both try to do that as, as much as we can. Um, you know, I don't really have any bias to anything. I just want to use what's going to do the best job for me. Mm -hmm. And if I can talk through the pros and cons of why something works better for one condition or another, then maybe that'll help somebody else down the line. Yeah. So speaking of helping people and getting getting people excited about yeah. you know F class and all that, how yeah. do we get more people into that specific shooting sport? You know, I I think it's uh, it's honestly, if you really look at F class in general, it's a known it's what we would call a known distance discipline, mm -hmm. meaning it can only be shot at six hundred or eight hundred or nine hundred or a thousand. Right. And so, in all fairness, it limits some of the ranges it limits the ability for people to necessarily explore it as much as say PRS, mm -hmm. right? But I think that more and more ranges are incorporating um, kind of, we will call it more of like club match type uh, F-class stuff where they're not necessarily excluding as many people. And my, my group's a perfect example. So I run a 600 yard group at my club. It is, it is technically like an F-class match, but we allow guys with folding bipods and, mm -hmm. and brakes and suppressors okay. and, yep. you know, because to me, having the shooters there is what's important. Now, it's not yep. a registered match, it's nothing like yep. that. But I think when people come and they see it, that's their first sort of, oh, well, that kind of looks fun and I like that gun. And they start asking questions. And then we start seeing come out to the local state matches and the local regional matches. And you know, our goal, I, I shoot with probably four or five guys that travel to nationals and Southwest nationals mm -hmm. and stuff with my group. And every time we're at the club, it's, hey, you should travel. Like, I don't care how good or bad you are, Come shoot, have fun. Mm -hmm. It's about the experience. It's about having fun out at the matches. And yes, we do it while doing F class, so that's great. But sure. um, I think that's for us. That's really what it's about. I I, I wish I could super sexy it up like PRS or something. <laughs> um, but, but I think what we do is incredibly challenging. I think it's very underrated because there's way more going on in in F class than just pretty guns and mm -hmm. and big rests and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's you know unfortunate that that maybe people don't have a better idea of what's involved with F class, but um, I try to get as many people as I can to come out and try it, no matter what the gear is that they have. Well, that includes me this year. Yep. And there's nothing like getting that firsthand experience in the seat, as it were. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll be sharing that <laughs> with uh, all of you as well. So here's your follow-up. Go to F Class John on YouTube and subscribe. We're going to put a link up here. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you follow John. He's a great guy. Uh, we're going to be doing more collaboration over the over the coming years and. <laughs> Hoping to, you know, have you show me the ins and outs of F class shooting after I build my rifle and all that. Yeah, love it. And our question for you: uh, Are you shooting F class? Uh, what are you shooting? What cartridge? What variant of F class? Whether it be a TR or open, tell us about your rig. Tell us about your experiences. Drop a comment, and we'll start that discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. 
If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.